You may not think, or well, you might know, you might not know how crucial satellites are for our day-to-day -day lives. I, pre I presume you know it. Mobile phones, TV programs, connection to the internet, holiday, business flights, they all rely on satellites. Our next speaker will present a successful use case that involves solving a satellite planning problem on a quantum processing unit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Software Officer at Pascal, Murad Beji. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. So my name is Murad, and I'm in charge of software and application development at Pascal. Um, Today, I'm going to tell you about how we did mission planning for satellite constellations on Pascal CPUs with our partner, Thales. So the problem we're interested in today belongs to the category of combinatorial optimization problems and is representative of many of the hard computational problems one can face in industry. Combinatorial optimization consists in finding uh, a solution, an optimal solution in a very large set of options. These problems are usually expressed as a set of options, a metric to optimize, a set of constraints to respect, and the goal is to find the solution that optimizes the metric while respecting all the constraints. The issue is that the search spaces grow exponentially with the sizes of the inputs, which makes these problems very hard computationally to solve. Today, corporates often use greedy approaches or domain-specific heuristics, um, for their solutions, but these are often limited in terms of either performance or quality of the results. A few applications of combinatorial optimization that are crucial in a uh, few domains are like supply chain, resource allocation, network design, scheduling, which is uh, our uh, application today, or portfolio optimization. The problem we are interested in today is uh, planning missions for satellite constellations. Uh, this use case was co-developed by Thales and Pascal in the scope of the quantum computing for Earth, observing, uh, for Earth observation study. So, we have at our disposal uh, multiple satellites orb orbiting around Earth, each containing an observation instrument, um, a sort of camera. Each satellite has a trajectory that is well defined by its orbit, and during a day, it will cover a certain region of Earth. On the other hand, a given number of observations are requested by clients, and the problem we're trying to solve is to maximize the number of observations made in a single day by the entire fleet of uh, our satellites. The objective of this project is planning the movements of the observation instruments on the multiple satellites during the day. Um, so, in order to reach this objective, we need to, uh, of course, respect a few constraints related to each satellite and to its environment. The first one is that satellites are equipped with optical instruments, so they cannot take pictures during the, during the night, and they can take pictures only when they fly over regions where there are no clouds. The second one is that the quality of the images must be ultra-high resolution, so that means that the observation instruments need to move slowly enough from one position to the other. Then, client requests also have different priorities, and it's important to favor the requests, the missions with higher priority uh, against the ones with lower priority. And finally, the plan that we compute must be flexible. We need to be able to adapt to new requests during the day, so it is important to be uh, not real-time, but to be able to be fast enough. In addition to all these constraints, the complexity of the problem also grows with the number of satellites we're taking into account. Um, so we can see here the difference between one and three satellites uh, flying over the same region. Um, the number of uh, data take opportunities we have with three satellites is much higher, so we're able to cover the region uh, much better but this comes at the cost of uh, more complex calculations because more decisions need to be made. So, the problem I just presented is uh, a computationally complex optimization problem. 
um, the problem is to assign missions to satellites. The metric we're trying to optimize is the number of missions uh, fulfilled. And the constraints we need to respect are the one I just uh, mentioned earlier. Taking all this into account, finding an optimal solution is extremely hard. Many approximate algorithms exist for this type of Earth-observing Earth satellites. And in order to solve this problem, Thales uses today a greedy method combined with domain-specific heuristics in production. Um, during our exploration, we started by understanding the classical high-performance methods used for this type of problems. And we came across a method that was recently developed that maps this scheduling problem into finding maximum independent sets and graphs. And this led us to design our solution. We leveraged the work done by these optimization experts for this scheduling problem, and that has shown improvements in both the solution time and in the numbers of scheduled missions beyond baseline methods. And we combined that with the method we developed at Pascal to efficiently find maximum independent sets on graphs. So how do we solve this problem with graphs in practice? Um, let's take a look a bit uh, into the technical details. The first step is to understand how to encode the problem onto a graph. A node in our graph is going to represent a specific mission fulfilled at a specific moment. We're going to assign labels to these nodes that, are, that will represent which satellites can uh, fulfill that mission. And the edges of our graph are going to represent the incompatibilities related to the constraints we have. So, for example, all the nodes related to a given mission will be linked, which translates into a mission can be, should be accomplished only once. And all the nodes related to a given satellite and a given time slot will be linked together, which means a satellite can only fulfill one mission at a given moment. <clears throat> so this uh, nice graph is an example that represents uh, a constellation of 12 satellites visiting a set of cities. And this is the graph we use for our use case. This is a synthetic example. Um, we actually took the uh, orbit of the International Space Station, shifted it 12 times, and uh, used various cities on Earth uh, as observations. So, now that we have encoded our problem into a graph, how do we solve it? Remember, what we're trying to do is maximize the number of missions that are accomplished. And we say that the mission here is a node. So we're looking for the biggest set of nodes that respects our constraints and the constraints themselves are edges. So what we are looking for in the end is the biggest set of nodes, such, at, such that no two nodes share an edge, and this is called a maximum independent set. For our graph, for example, using a classical heuristic method, uh, we can see here uh, a maximum independent set, so it's a feasible solution to this problem with uh, the red dots. It appears that neutral atoms QPUs are good at finding maximum independent sets. Thanks to a highly flexible architecture, we can change the shape of our quantum register from one quantum program to the other. And we can directly reproduce the connectivity of a graph with our atoms. This is a, real, a really powerful feature and makes our devices good at treating graph problem in general and this problem in particular. As an example, um, this is the embedding of a random graph on the left into a quantum register on the right, and each individual dot here represents a single atom trapped in an optical tweezer. Once we have prepared our quantum register, Rydberg Dynamics can be leveraged to encode uh, naturally the constraints of, the, of a problem um, and evolve the system towards a solution. Oh, sorry for the equation. Um, we can see here, for example, that after our quantum program, the state of the system represents a maximum independent set of a graph. And we can directly, uh, the, from the graph we had uh, on the previous slide, get a maximum independent set, which is uh, with the colored nodes here. In order to solve these types of problems, we operate our devices in the analog mode. 
um, instead of designing complex uh, and large quantum circuits made of many gates, we uh, leverage the natural dynamics of our systems and map the problem directly on these dynamics. By letting our quantum system follow what it is naturally designed to do, we are able to perform computations uh, more efficiently, and in, in particular, we are able to be much more resilient to errors and noise. This is a very important feature for today's devices, um, as the ecosystem is still struggling into having large enough systems to implement efficient error correction uh, for digital circuits. So as Heather West was mentioning earlier, we would need millions of qubits to be able to do something uh, practical today with digital, while with analog we're already able to treat practical problems today. So, now we know how to find maximum independent sets, I hope. Um, let's go back to our original problem and try to solve it. So the initial graph we had is made of 400 nodes. Um, using our maximum independent set solver, one would need 400 qubits to have the solution. As Loic was uh, showing you earlier on our roadmap, these scales will soon be available on our uh, hardware products. But we still wanted to solve this problem today. So the approach we had was to split our large graph into a, a set of smaller ones. The idea was to split it into subgraphs that are as independent as possible. We then solved our maximum independent set problem for each one of these subgraphs and we merged the solutions using some heuristic rules to fix conflicts in the final solution. From our initial large graph that was too big to be implemented, we derived 300 smaller graphs of up to 25 nodes, and we then used our MIS solver to compute to find maximum independent sets for each one of these subgraphs. So here are the results uh, of these um, runs, and we can see that with high probability, we always end up finding a maximum independent set for each of these graphs. And in the few cases where we could not, we end up with a large enough independent set that still leads us to a feasible solution. So if we look at what happens for a given graph, uh, we start on the left with the original graph that we got. Uh, we compute a good uh, embedding on our quantum register at its right. I think some colors are missing, but... Um, we then run our MIS solver uh, and get a bunch of potential MIS candidates uh, from the different samples we have from measuring our system. And we can then pick the right one and transpose that uh, to our original graph. So, during this project, we used uh, state-of-the-art methods combined with our quantum maximum independent set solver, and we managed to solve a real-world industrial problem and that has been implemented on a QPU today. At this stage, classical methods still, uh, are still ahead in terms of raw performance, but with uh, what Loic shared earlier about our roadmap, we believe that this type of method can be competitive uh, soon. And our partners at Thales, and with, with our partners at Thales, we are preparing the next steps to scale up the operational use of this quantum approach to satellite constellations mission planning. At Pascal, we're building up years of R&D into uh, quantum algorithms and turning that into a portfolio of quantum solvers in various areas. Uh, optimization, partial differential equation solving, machine learning, quantum simulation. Each time we collaborate with a new partner or a new client on a new problem, we can leverage our existing solutions. So the project I presented today was based on a maximum independent end solver but during the first stages of the project, we explored other approaches in optimization before converging towards this one. Customizing and extending existing solutions to other problems with industrial relevance is at the core of our intentions and uh, is aligned with our roadmap capabilities. With our partners at Thales, we will start exploring other Thales applications where this quantum multi-constraint scheduling algorithm can bring value and we're interested in doing so with our other partners and clients. Thank you. <laughs>